Next slide. All right, here's where we get different. Our dynamic bench. Since we're trying to raise all these quantity, all these qualities together, they all have to be cycled and looked at separately. Does that make sense? Okay. Our dynamic bench press, using the three different grips that we're going to talk about, with the weeks here at the bottom, okay, doesn't change. That phase or that mesocycle is constant. There are some changes that we're doing with it now with chains and bands, as we're going to talk about later. But for right now, just think of that as being constant. That's going to be your eight sets of three at fifty percent. The dynamic squat goes in four week waves. You go from a blue wave to a, a yellow wave. The colors just indicate a break in the wave. The max effort bench exercises can be a phase anywhere between one, two, to three weeks. So if you say the first green block is a board press, the orange block is a floor press, the next block is a close grip incline press, the next block might be close grip bench presses. For some reason you feel you can cycle that for two weeks pretty effectively. Okay, so you cycle it for two weeks instead of the one. Then you go back to the board pressing. Everybody see what's going on here? So that movement's being cycled differently than the other ones. The reason for that we'll talk about a little later. The max effort squat, basically the same thing. The max effort exercises are going to be cycled every one to three weeks. And we're going to go over the max effort, or max effort work in detail. The supplemental work, that's all the exercises that follow but are still important, are going to be cycled about every three weeks, every three to four weeks. If it's tricep extensions, every the accessory exercises are going to be cycled pretty much every couple of weeks. I don't. I think with your accessories and supplementals, as we'll talk about a little later, I think the more you rotate them, the better it is because it's not as important as what you really think. Okay, it's important to train the muscle. So the more you can keep the muscle confused, the better it's going to be. If you're doing, God, I've seen this dumbbell tricep extensions, like we're in the videos, Louis videos. Just because they're in the videos does not mean that you're supposed to do them every Sunday and Wednesday for three years straight. Eight sets of, you know, what is it, six to eight sets of eight reps or whatever he does. And people do that. Okay, what I'm trying to point out here is, no, 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 you change that stuff around. Dave, I, yeah. on the max effort, when you, when you say rotate uh, your max effort every one to three weeks, does that depend on your uh, experience level? If you're yeah. if you're new, then you could last three weeks. But if you're uh, somewhat intermediate or advanced, you may have to rotate it like one, every one or two two weeks. Because yeah. uh, I seem to get a, a gain the second week, but then if I go into the third week, I, I don't get a gain off the effort to uh, rotate it to something yeah. else. So usually yeah. two weeks is. But does that change as you as you become more? Advanced? Yeah, it changes with the exercise too. Definitely. Well. Um, I think the max effort work comes up first. I have a question about yeah. from that. Now, based on what you just said, with changing it up, and then other stuff that I've, that I've seen you read, that the more exercises you do, the more coordinated your muscles become. Based on that theory, what, how I've tried to implement this is for supplementing like triceps, do two different tricep supplement exercises that week, but then we'll change them every four weeks. So you still, you're getting two exercises. For the I change weeks. it more than that because with the tricep, it depends. There, you'll see here in a minute. There's a big difference between supplemental work mm -hmm. and accessory work. Okay. If it's a supplemental exercise, yeah, you could probably hold it out for three weeks or so. If it's an accessory exercise, it makes no difference. You're going to explain the difference. Yeah, oh, definitely, okay. definitely. That first that slide there was just to kind of show you that instead of having segmented, you know, cycles for the full program. We have segmented cycles for each individual aspect of strength that we're trying to develop. Okay. All periodization has a meso or macro cycle, which for us we're going to go over the introduction, the basic, and the circle maximal phase. I knew it was coming. Great time. First one, first method we're going to talk about, there's three methods that we utilize, the max effort method, repetition method, dynamic effort method. First method we're going to spend some time on is the max effort method. The application that we use 
As you saw before, we had two days for max effort work, one for the squat, one for the bench. We use one time per week per lift for one specific movement. There's no two max effort exercises in a workout. If you're gonna do a board press, now some of these exercises you may not know yet, trust me, you will after we leave the gym this afternoon, okay? You'll start warming up with threes, or fives, or whatever. I don't care how you warm up, but I will tell you a warm-up set does not mean start with 135. Start with the bar, go 95 pounds, 135, and work up that way. If we're in the gym and we're doing a max effort board press, it's going to be 45 for maybe two sets. 95 for a couple sets, 135, probably start doing threes, 185, 225, 275, 315, 365, 405. When I get to 405, my best is around 500. I got to make a decision. Am I going to go for a triple record or am I going to go for a single record? And I make that decision based upon how I feel. If I feel like crap, I'm probably going to try to break a triple record. All right, so then I might go 430, 455 and try to break my triple. All right, if I'm going to go for a single, I don't want to go 430, 455 for triples because what's it going to do? It's going to tear me up. All right, so I might go 455 single, 505 single. You always want to try to break your records. Okay. Rest periods, we don't even watch them, to tell you the truth. But I'm going to guess and say it's about two to five minutes. But the interesting thing is we all do the same max effort exercise in the gym. There might be a group of seven guys all rotating through. So you figure one minute per guy, probably seven, seven minutes. Well, people start falling out. If you've seen the videos, you'll notice. There's seven guys there, but there's only one that remains at the end. When they start falling out, the rest period doesn't change. The rest period speeds up. Because now this guy's not there anymore. So he's gone. So it actually the rest period decreases the higher you end up going. So really it's just enough to catch your breath to go again? No, nah, it's a little longer than that. It's okay. a little longer than that. Okay. Yeah. The key with the max effort work is to strain. It's the most important thing, and that's for two to four seconds is what we're looking for. And you want to keep track of your records. So we talked about before with max effort work, a beginner is going to be able to cycle max effort work longer than an advanced lifter. The reason for that is going to be twofold. Neuromuscular coordination, which is just coordination, okay? If I had you do, and you've never done it before, a good morning squat, which is a hybrid combination lift. Never done it before, you're going to be all over the place, okay, regardless of the lifter. You'll probably be able to break the record on it for about two or three weeks, okay? Next time you do it, you pretty much have a good idea how to do it. All right, so you might only be able to go two weeks. Now let's say you train with us at Westside and we live and die by good mornings. We can't do a good, we can't do a max effort exercise more than once. We switch it every single week. We know how to do the exercise. We're coordinated to do the exercise because we've done it so many times. Second issue with that is going to be motor control. How much muscle are you actually recruiting and putting into the exercise? The more experienced lifter is going to be able to blast into an exercise, recruit more muscle than an inexperienced lifter, which means he's going to be able to get his record a much faster. He'll get his record in the first week, okay, because he knows how to bring all that into it, where the average one. If I, I don't know the exact percents, I'd have to look them up, but we can say that, you know, Mike's an experienced lifter. He's probably recruiting 80% of all the available muscle into an exercise, say into a squat. Now we'll take a, somebody, a beginner on the lower end, probably 50%. And that's assuming 50% that the guy's pulling everything in synchronization and working together too. Not just individual muscles, but everything working together as a package. That's gonna be a difference as well. That's why I always say one to three weeks Samples. Count the strain.
Yeah.